gather on this Memorial Day to be reminded of the high cost of freedom and to pay honor to those who have served our country, given their lives for it. We ask that you be with us and comfort us. Help us to honor well those who have made the utmost sacrifice for the cause of liberty. Help us to honor them with sincerity and to be inspired by them. Let us grieve well and rejoice well. And above all, Help us to realize that every gift we encounter on this earth comes only from you, the great giver of grace and mercy, in your Son's name, amen. 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 Oh, beautiful, for spacious sky. For amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty, above the fruited plain, America. shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea
have been thousands of words written, millions of tears have been shed. Here we stand in silence as our fallen heroes lay dead. Rows and rows of simple white crosses line Arlington's green grasses. More and more shall be added as each day quickly passes. Through major wars and conflicts, our youth have fought and died. They have assured us special freedoms served up with American pride. We've sent America's best to fight a dozen times or more. Now it is our duty to recognize, to remember, to try and even the score. So we built monuments and shrines, erected towers so very tall, done in the memory of our fallen heroes, answering God's last call. We've set aside this day to remember those who have perished, yes, those who gave their lives for the freedoms we now cherish. What more can we do except to remember and to pray? Ask God to hold and comfort them in this very special way. As we gather here today, we call to thee, our God above. We pray that we and all the world shall soon know peace and love. missing son. She stood there in the crowd on a warm day in May, just a frail little old lady with thinning hair of gray. There among the rest of us, she was hardly noticed at all. Then a veteran saw her standing there, nearly ready to fall. He offered her his chair, sit here, sit in the shade. The wrinkles in her face showed the years of pain she'd paid. She came to this program in search of her long lost son. They'd sent him off to war and he was her only one. After the war had ended, he just never came home. So down through these many years, she had to face life alone. She'd been to many memorial programs hoping to find him there. She knew she'd recognize him with his locks of golden hair. She said, I'll keep coming back. Maybe he'll be here one day, standing with the rest of you or marching along the way. Or perhaps he'll carry old glory, standing ever so tall. Or maybe step to attention, hearing the commander's call. He might even fire a rifle to salute a fallen friend, or play taps on a bugle to signify their end. She lifted her head again to take another look around. Then a smile crossed her lips as if she might have found. With a deep breath, she closed her eyes and took her final sleep. The veteran held her in his arms and prayed God her soul to keep. Then he whispered one last prayer. Lord, thy will be done. Yes, the soldier's mother and finally found her missing son. Thank you, Miller. Uh, this morning, uh, we were have uh, a reading. Carol, you're here. I, I didn't know Carol was here. Uh, we will now have uh, Carol Geske, which is the past president of the Church Legion Auxiliary Unit 12, read uh, Flanders Speak. Flanders Field, the poppies glow between the crosses, row on row. They mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, flock, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived. Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up your quarrel with the foe. To you from calling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders field. Thank you, 
here. Um, our address this morning is uh, going to be given by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Humbach. Uh, he's a uh, National Guard, retired. He's a native of Frankfurt. He's been 34 years in the uh, National Guard. Numerous schools throughout the tenure in the service, won numerous medals. Uh, and we're very fortunate each year, it seems like we, someone comes forward uh, from our own area to, uh, to volunteer to be our speaker. So at this time, uh, we would uh, welcome Robert Pombach. Morning. Morning. Fellow veterans. <laughs> Yes, it's a great honor and privilege to be here. Everybody hear me in the back? Okay, good. Uh, we're gathered here today to pay homage to our heroes. When I talk about heroes, I'm talking more about our veterans past and present. We remember those people who have also had a positive impact on our lives, with our family, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins. We remember them also. I'd be amiss if I didn't take this opportunity to talk to a uh, very special group of veterans. Uh, earlier this month in May, we celebrated the 70, 70th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day. So it should be no surprise I'm going to uh, give a large, large part of my speech to our World War II veterans also known as the Great Generation. Do we have any World War II vets here? Okay, great. That's great. Yet there are so many, their numbers are dwindling so fast and so quickly, and we need to uh, pay special homage to them especially. We need to take the time to pay special homage to all our veterans, but especially especially the great generation. From Pearl Harbor to the sands of Omaha Beach to the sands of Iwo Jima, we remember. We remember the sailors of the USS Indianapolis, who by coincidence, a large number, 56 soldiers, or sailors, sorry, were picked up by our own Adrian Marks, who later received the Air Medal. It's uh, no coincidence that Clinton County has had a lot of famous people just, just here and in, in the cemeteries. If you go to the cemeteries, you'll see some, some uh, great history of our veterans out there. The sinking of the Indian, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but the sinking of the Indianapolis had great significance. It was the, uh, the destroyer that uh, carried parts for the atomic bomb that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So the Indianapolis was of great significance to the uh, World War II. We also remember our veterans, Lexington and Concord, from the Revolutionary War, the bloody fields of Gettysburg, to Rough Riders, To the war to end all wars, which unfortunately did not end all wars. From the snow covered battlefields of Korea to the Idrang Valley in Vietnam, we remember. From the sands of Desert Storm to the sands of Iraq and Afghanistan, we remember. On Memorial Day, we walked the cemeteries and placed the stars and bars at our fallen comrades' headstones. I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about our returning veterans. When we talk about <coughs> Veterans Day or Memorial Day, a lot of times we don't talk about the living. As far as our returning veterans, these veterans oftentimes will have physical and emotional scars that run death deep post-traumatic stress syndrome, physical inflictions, IEDs, which I had a first-hand glimpse of when I was in Afghanistan. 
We also remember our Gold Star families. Do we have any Gold Star families in attendance? No? Does everybody know what a Gold Star family is? Well, if you don't know, a Gold Star family is a family that has had a, a veteran who has been killed in action. So we need to take special attention, pay special attention to our Gold Star family. Also remember the families of the disabled veterans who have a, a down heavy burden of their own for taking care of our veterans. The emotional, physical, and financial demands are great and never ending to change families forever. Remember our mili military families that have still have loved ones deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, wherever. We have special operations units now, I'm sure, Afghanistan, Iraq, and uh, the newest threat, ISIS. I think everybody's heard about them. They have effectively taken a third of Iraq and Syria. So they pretty much are now a state. So it's going to be one of the next threats we're going to be facing. And we need to face it effectively. Godspeed to those who that are still deployed. We wish them a safe return. We also need to remember 9-11, where 3,000 people gave their lives. We need to remember the uh, planes that were the instruments of terrorist destruction. We need to remember Flight 93, let's roll, who effectively took control of that aircraft and had a crash in field Pennsylvania saving more lives. It is, it's a sad thing that those people had to perish, but you have to applaud them for doing the right thing. I'd be amiss if I didn't say something about the first responders who we uh, have in attendance. I see we have our firemen, I'm not sure if we have any police, but first responders <coughs> put their life on the line every day. And at the Twin Towers, we also live, lost 400 first responders in, in that, in, at the Twin Towers. We remember people now past, our mothers, our fathers, our siblings, cousins, uncles, aunts, or anyone that had influence on our upbringing, that special person, that father who taught us how to hunt or fish, mother who picked us up and brushed us off to send us about on our way. It is a day to remember them also. In closing, cherish and honor those veterans, families, and friends that have passed. Let us be gracious and kind and understanding to our living veterans, their families, and friends. Foremost, remember. Always remember. It's sad in a way every year we do uh, see a certain demise of the uh, World War II veterans are here. I know a lot of them that would love to be here today and working at the funeral home uh, every year. It's sad in a way. Mark, I know your dad would have loved to be here. Uh, he's not feeling well. We'll think about it. <clears throat> uh, next, we'll have a, uh, a song, a Star Spangled Banner by Michelle Woods. Before I sing, they will indulge me. I've been singing this song off and on for breakfast. I was 13 years old. It's always been a privilege. And I have listened to many, many, many people speak. You know, yes, we memorialize these men for what they have done for our nation. And they bought and fought our freedom. But one freedom that I have noticed, especially today, that we are, need to be so thankful for, is our religious freedom. They have fought 
so we can keep our churches open. They have fought so that we can continue to worship our God. I watched something last night, and it really made me think. There's no, there's no really difference between what our boys are fighting for and how we fight daily for a relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to fight daily because of what's going on in this world today. All you have to do is watch the news, and it scares you to death for when someone's going to come here and take our religious freedom away from us. Don't you agree? So I want you to think about that. Freedom is freedom. Freedom is freedom from what these boys fought for, and freedom is the freedom that you have every day to know Jesus Christ and to know that you have the freedom to run to him when you have a problem and run to him and know that he's there to take that problem away from you. Those are freedoms that we are allowed and that we have each and every day. Not only this day, not only this special day that we memorialize these boys that fought for us to keep our churches open, but you have it every day through Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget that. Don't just use it on Memorial Day. Use it every day through a relationship with Christ. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight what so proudly we hail at the twilight God, Lord of all nations, thank you for the freedom we enjoy in this country, for the opportunities to flourish, for the security of our land. Thank you for those who have served in the armed services of our country, risking their lives for our liberty. Lord, may we be more aware of just how blessed we are as a nation. 
We pray today for the families and friends of those who have given <coughs> their lives in service to our nation. May they be comforted in their sadness. As we remember those who gave, have given their lives in the past, we also thank of those whose lives live on and alive today. Protect them, encourage them, bring them home safely and soon. Give wisdom to the leaders of our armed services so that peace with justice might be established in our world. Guide those who lead our nation. Help them to follow diplomatic paths that prevail needless conflict. We know, Lord, that the ultimate peace will not come until your kingdom is here in all its fullness. Nevertheless, we pray for a taste of the future. We ask for peace to grow throughout the world today so that fewer and fewer men and women will have to risk and even to sacrifice their lives. We long for the day when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. May your kingdom come, Lord, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All praise to you, God of grace, God of mercy, and God of justice, and God of peace. King of kings, and Lord of lords, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 several cemeteries in this county and it's quite a, it's quite an undertaking so if you're part of those volunteers uh, we salute you and we thank you for for doing that uh, we would certainly want to thank Goodman's funeral home and uh, Arthur West funeral and uh, cremation services for, for printing our program today uh, they're very generous when it comes to helping us and the salute that you just heard and the 21 guns outside tax. Uh, that was brought to uh, us today as usual by our uh, a Marine Corps League. Today run, uh, ran by uh, uh, Ron Montgomery. Uh, they're very they're very good about helping us out and uh, uh, they're a wonderful group. Uh, I always say men but however they do have a lady in, the, uh, in that color guard now so we don't want to miss her and also we have a, a lady that's passing out programs as a veteran of the uh, of the army. So uh, many thanks to them. Uh, it seems like I always miss somebody when it comes to these things. Uh, you appreciate you bugler. Oh, see, I told you. Rocky Matz uh, was a bugler today. Uh, he's a member of the uh, Father's Auxiliary of the VFW. 
Uh, we thank the ladies uh, of the DFW for putting together soup and sandwiches today for everyone and the use of this hall. Uh, if I miss someone, I apologize. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, uh, again, we appreciate you being here and uh, that's going to conclude our service. Bruce, do you have anything? Yeah. Um, since we didn't go down to uh, the creek today, the bridge, to uh, strew flowers on the waters, if any of you have brought flower petals today, uh, please do stop by and cast those on the uh, waters in remembrance of our uh, sailors and marines who lost their lives at sea. Yeah, we want to thank the Eagles and the VFW and American Legion Auxiliary Units and uh, their post for bringing Reese to lay today. And we're sorry we didn't have that part of the program, but uh, we do appreciate the bringing Reese. Thank you very much.